The Resident Evil games are weird. I cannot think of a single other series that has gone through such a rapid tonal shift so quickly. Within two entries of this series, we went from this... ...to this. Today, for no real reason, I'm going to be comparing and contrasting these two wildly different AAA titles. I have five categories that I'm going to be talking about today. Gameplay, atmosphere, content, level design, and story. I'll talk about both games and how I feel about those individual aspects of them, and for the hell of it, I'm going to assign points for the winner of each of the five categories. By the end of the video, we'll see which one arbitrarily rates higher in my completely subjective opinion. That being said, let's just jump into the first category and the most important part of any game. Gameplay. I want to start off by acknowledging the fact that Resident Evil 6 and 7 are two very different games. One is more action than horror, and the other is more horror than action. But the commonality between these games is that they both mix up these two ingredients to varying effects. Let's go ahead and start with Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. This one is way more about sneaking, stealing, and sleuthing, as opposed to stabbing, shooting, and screaming. Although there is definitely some screaming in there. It's methodically paced and very slow in both good ways and bad. I feel like I can showcase the best of this game's slow pace with one simple moment. Nope. Not feeling it. Biohazard is at its best when it takes its time and flexes those impending dread muscles. Sadly, that only lasts for like two hours and then the negative side of the speed sets in. It feels like the developers are arbitrarily limiting your evasive options by impeding Ethan's ability to walk like a normal fucking human man. It's Isaac Clark syndrome all over again. If I was Ethan, I'd turn into Usain Bolt in that motherfucker. I'd be parkouring over tables, I'd I would bust my ass and get killed, no doubt. But the late game certainly isn't all bad. Sometimes that oppressive atmosphere does make a reappearance, especially on that giant labyrinth of a boat. Every Resident Evil's gotta have a boat. My personal favorite portion of the game came totally out of left field though. I dug the shit out of that weird little puzzle room thrown together by the resident bitch ass baker boy. I used to play the shit out of those escape the room flash games and this is essentially the most HD version of those ever made. It's great. My experience with this puzzle started off strong when I realized, as I'm sure many of you did, that I could pop all of these fucking balloons. So after popping every single balloon I possibly could, like any reasonable person would, I really put my brain to the grindstone and attempted to solve this shit on my own. But man, I just could not do it. The five letter lock had me trapped and I could not figure out the next step. So I reload the game, of course pop all the balloons again, and then I keep at it. 20 minutes later, still haven't fucking solved it. Man, I really feel like a... You... Motherfucker! That discovery right there was a rewarding experience because it made me think, it put me through my paces, and I felt like I earned that progress. And yes, I did not solve that puzzle correctly. You're supposed to like get the clown to scribble on you, but I couldn't get the tell. I, I, it doesn't matter, it's nonsense. I wish I could say that all of Biohazard scenarios gave me that warm, fuzzy feeling. I don't play Resident Evil for fucking gnats. What is this? One thing I can say for sure is that this game was not built for boss fights. The second I can rely on circle strafing to take down a horror villain, I, I, I'm just not scared anymore. When dealing with these situations, I don't want to be able to apply the same techniques I used in Banjo-Tooie. The only genuinely effective boss fight happens 20 minutes in when you first find Mia. Yeah. Fuck that. You feel totally helpless during this encounter, and I desperately wanted that feeling to last because it was pungent. But I got too jacked up with ammo and drugs way too fast to maintain that sense of impending dread. Maybe that has to do with how I personally played. I spent like 45 minutes gacked the fuck up on psychostimulants just running around that house. My experience with the game is on me to some extent, but I feel like I gave this game its due and got into it as much as I could and it just didn't give me the raw horror experience that I wanted. All I had to do was take the drugs the game gave me and everything was smooth sailing. Drugs solve your problems, kids. Now, I feel like I could come up with a reasonable segue to move on to the other game. 
But reasonable isn't a word I associate with Resident Evil 6, so we're just gonna SMASH CUT! Oh fuck! Yeah, what the look at fuck that. is that? Is that a zombie shark? Why is that giant snake in this? Look at all these colors! What? Fuck them up! Yes! Yes! I just wanna start with the fact that by the time I finished Resident Evil 6, my dick had grown five inches, so now it's five inches. This is a visceral experience with high stakes, high tension, and high resolution spider titties. Something I didn't know I needed until this game. I picked up the PS4 version on sale a few weeks back, and honestly, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of RE6 blew me the fuck away. I was not expecting such a fast-paced, action-packed shooter, but I got some Vanquish-level shit. Sure, hardcore Michael Bay-esque action isn't what you'd normally go to a Resident Evil game for, but the game exists, we just gotta deal with it. You'll find it's quite lovable when you give it a chance. Look at this nonsense! You're comboing fucking Dilaphosauruses with your bare hand- I- Wait, I'm sorry, when did dinosaurs enter the picture? It doesn't matter, punching dinosaurs is not an activity that I get to participate in often, so I'm going to cherish every moment. And truly, who gives a fuck if there are dinosaurs? This game drags you face first through so many batshit scenarios that you literally don't have time to ask questions. Combine that base level insanity with solid shooting mechanics, some badass dodging, and countless crazy melee finishers, and you have a recipe for the glorious ridiculousness that is Resident Evil 6. Something else this game excels in are the boss fights. They're fucking bananas. Have you ever wanted to fight a zombie saber tooth tiger? Probably not, because that's absurd. But you're gonna do that shit. And yes, there are quick time events. There are a lot of quick time events. But hey, the exact same shit happens in Biohazard. The only difference being that RE6 makes you interact with what's happening, whereas RE7 kind of just straps you into a cutscene every few minutes and has its way with you. At this point, I've been ranting for like five minutes, and if I don't stop now, I will just never stop. So it's probably time to wrap up this bit and move on to the next one. In conclusion, I'm gonna go ahead and give the first point to the sixth game in the series. The gameplay is so just fun and on point and endlessly replayable that I can see myself coming back to this for months, maybe even years. Next up, Atmosphere. Heck of a thing, man. This sure shit beats the hell out of dying. So now that we've had a rather lengthy discussion on the gameplay of these two titles, I'm sure it's not hard to guess the winner of this current category. Spoilers guys, it's Resident Evil 7. Honestly, the only question of atmosphere in RE6 is how many explosions can we fit into the Earth's atmosphere. At a base level, RE7 really does do a good job of bringing back the atmospheric horror of the older games, especially in the early portions, as I've already mentioned. Truly, when this game is on, it's fucking on. The early encounter with Mia is petrifying, as is pretty much all the stuff involving Daddy-O before it just devolves into Jack Baker's punch out. A big part of the effectiveness of the early game is its use of sound. The sound design in this game is great. Every step feels crisp. Every creak of a door and swing of an axe is spot on. The guns aren't nearly as numerous as they are in RE6, but they all feel way more handcrafted and much more fun to individually wield. Just listen to this clip of Ethan trotting around with his trusty shotgun. When was the last time you heard a game put in the sound of shotgun shells rattling around in the barrel? It's a small detail, but small details are very important and very comforting when you're facing down an unkillable hillbilly. Unkillabilly? Now, when it comes to RE6, uh, well, I actually played most of that with the sound off because it's rather assaultive. Here, to make a point, let's just pop it on her- Oh, 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 One positive thing I can say about RE6's sound is that the voice acting is so wonderful. Chris? Police on that puppy. These actors are so dedicated to these larger-than-life characters that they sell even the cheesiest of lines. Him again? Friend of yours? Or like an ex-girlfriend? Guy doesn't know when to quit. Welcome to the club. But of course, voice acting alone doesn't supersede the overall awesomeness of RE7's sound design and general atmosphere. Obvious point to RE7. Content. Let's start with the basics of these two games' content, their main campaigns. My playtime until completion for Biohazard was around 8 hours, whereas my time with RE6 totaled to about 16 hours. Double the time, and I still haven't even started the final campaign. Cause it's apparently the worst. Objectively speaking, RE6 simply has more content on nearly every level. The one thing RE7 does have on 6 is its twist on New Game Plus mode. RE6 is more your standard New Game Plus, you start out with all your weapons, gadgets, and abilities unlocked from the get-go and that's about it. All games should have this, by the way. RE7 though, RE7 goes above and beyond to distinguish itself from the bevy of modern New Game Plus modes with its own twist on the concept, 
Madhouse mode. Madhouse heavily remixes the biohazard experience by changing enemy placements, making enemies tougher and faster, moving items around, and even adjusting some puzzles to be more complicated than they were in the original campaign. It's fucking sweet, and it's a feature that I feel nearly all linear horror games would benefit from to keep the scares and intensity fresh on a second playthrough. That's a big problem with straight horror games, they're often very similar every time you play through them, and horror simply can't exist when you know exactly what's going to happen next. RE6, on the other hand, subverts this issue you by just not having any horror at all. Being scared is for pussies named Ethan, not Chris Boulder, Biceps Redfield, and Leon the Immovable Bull Kennedy. That being said, let's move on to RE6's campaign, or should I say campaigns. There are four stories happening in RE6, all running parallel to one another, which results in a very cohesive group of campaigns that lock together in a variety of interesting ways. You'll come across characters and hear their part of the story when you play their own campaigns, and sometimes you'll even fight the same bosses from different angles. It's a great little gimmick that keeps any of the three main campaigns from feeling unnecessary. Can't say much about the Ada campaign because I haven't gotten to it yet, but I'm certainly intrigued to see what the fuck she was up to while all this shit was happening across the globe. So I'd say we've done a good job of covering the main story modes of these games so far, but what about the side content, the extra stuff? Well, uh, uh, Resident Evil 7 has a bunch of story-based mini-games and a horde mode, if you want to pay for that. I didn't, personally. Resident Evil 6 has its main campaigns, which are littered with collectibles that you can view in a special little arcade cabinet menu for some reason. There's The Mercenaries, which is essentially just a time-based horde mode where you kill everything in sight, and let me just say, it's fucking awesome. So maybe the RE7 one's good, I don't know. Yet again, didn't pay for it. There's also a bunch of multiplayer modes that, uh... Well, let's move on. And finally, there's Agent Hunt, which allows you to go Dark Souls on a motherfucker and invade their game as a monster. Ever wanted to play as a regenerator? Well, go ahead and seppuku that dream right now because it is a terrible experience. Basically unplayable. Why can't I turn this fucking dog? But shit, man. Admittedly, I did have some fun trolling people online as uh, Rash Gash Plash or whatever the fuck they're called in this game. Speaking of enemies, this is important. In Resident Evil 7, weirdly enough, you only fight seven enemies in the whole game. One of which you never even get to murder, which is incredibly frustrating, because that motherfucker had to go! I'm really trying to think of a nice way to say this, but I can't. Fighting these regenerator knockoffs over and 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 over again was bullshit. The design is lame, they offer nothing new or interesting, and most importantly, they stop being scary after 15 minutes. I enjoyed the time I spent with the individual Baker family members, but the hours of padding spent with this trio of the most generic monsters you can possibly imagine we're kind of agonizing at points. And no, the one with the big spooky arm does not count as a new enemy, there are just three. Compare the seven and or three of Biohazard to the 84 of Resident Evil 6. There's a whole goddamn menu for these things, it's like the most fucked up game of Pokemon. Sure, some of the enemy types are a little copy paste, there's a lot of zombies just holding various implements. Zombie with an axe, zombie with a 2 by 4 zombie with a liquid nitrogen tank, zombie with a double ended dildo, but a lot of the other enemies are an absolute joy to face off against. As I've mentioned, RE6 took me around 16 hours to complete, which means on average I was facing down 5 new enemy types every hour of gameplay. I'm giving the point here to RE6, not just because of the variety of enemies, but because of the collectibles, the split screen, the extra modes, and the literal timeline of all the game's cutscenes that you have by the end. RE6 has a lot to offer. Level design. The level design in the Resident Evil series has always been worthy of praise. This series is built on its iconic moments and locations, and for those moments of genuine, memorable fright to stick, you need good level design. But until RE7, none of the games I've played in the series have really impressed me with the levels. Take RE6 for instance. RE6's levels are just tubes, decorated exploding tubes that you run through. Nothing wrong with that, it lends to the game's breakneck pace, but it's nothing creatively spectacular. Biohazard on the other hand does a very solid job of giving you the right amount of freedom versus linearity when it comes to exploring the environments. The game isn't divided up into levels per se, but it is cut up into six or seven chunks, all of which are compact enough that you always know where you're supposed to be going, but large and detailed enough that you can get sidetracked on your way to your objective. It's also got a touch of Metroidvania when it comes to backtracking to old locations and unlocking new areas with the items you've acquired on your journey. It's no doubt a well-designed game when it comes to the way the Baker Estate is put together. It's immense fun to try to discover every nook and cranny of the place, all the while getting little clues as to who 
the Bakers were before their residents became evil. And make no mistake, this game lives up to the title in a way that the games haven't since... Uh, pretty much the first one, I guess, right? What was the residence in 4? The village? The country of Spain? What about 5? The entire continent of Africa? By proxy, I guess that means the residence of RE6 is, in fact, the entire Earth. Biohazard strips it back with a classic mansion residence that is all caps, E-V-I-L. Every villain is lemons. To the point where it's almost comical how sinister this house is, but at least they indulge that every once in a while. Who builds this shit? I do have a bit of a problem with the amount of backtracking in this game. I'd love to see a way bigger and even more elaborate environment next time around because I feel like the house is the real star of this game. The main house and the boat. Both of these locations are stellar in their effectiveness. So yeah, definitely a point to RE7 here. And now, last but certainly not least, story. So here we are. The final category of comparison, and currently it's all tied up. I'm gonna go ahead and break that tie right now and tell you exactly who wins this category before I get into it. The superior story between these two games, in my opinion, is no doubt Resident Evil 6. You can send your death threats to PurposelessRabbitHole's email at emyass.edu. But why, Charlie? How could you possibly disagree with the sheepy masses of cocksucking troglodytes who declare that Resident Evil 6 is the worst story this side of Battlefield fucking Earth? Okay, I guess I see some comparison. You play as Ethan, codenamed Faceless White Male Protagonist number 637, as he searches for his Muppet-ass looking girlfriend, Mia. I obviously can't go into the details of the full story here, but I'm kind of assuming you've played both games, so whatever. There's a pinch of PT thrown in there, along with a healthy dose of Chainsaw Massacre, a dash of Outlast, and a spicy smattering of the Threer near the end. But therein lies the problem. Maybe the reason I could never get fully invested in this game's story is because Resident Evil 7 is actually just a bunch of other games stacked on top of each other in a trench coat trying to con my ass with some old shit. This game is just other games. And yes, if you really wanted to, you could find a game that looks like any other game. Everything looks like something else, everything's been done before. But man, these guys were not shooting for the stars in terms of originality. If you can say one thing about Resident Evil 6's plot, it's that this shit is pure Resident Evil. It's got the witty quips, it's got the crazy monsters, it's got the boss battles and the characters. It's essentially an ultra-distilled, highly flammable version of the shit that everybody loves. Resident Evil 6 is the Everclear of this series, and much like Everclear, Resident Evil 6 is not easy to down, but once you acquire that taste, there is nothing like it. Now don't misunderstand me, I really do appreciate the fact that Biohazard was trying something new by introducing a new setting and new characters and stuff, but I feel like it never distanced itself from the series as much as it should have for what it was trying to do. If you're gonna reboot this series, actually reboot it! The second I read a magazine that mentions fucking Raccoon City, I immediately remember that this takes place in the same universe in which a man got into a fist fight with a boulder and won. The immersion is broken. And okay, can we talk about Chris Redfield real quick? Resident Evil 6's story made me give a fuck about Chris Redfield. That man's biceps are big, but his heart is bigger. Chris's campaign in RE6 is a redemption story, and it's a damn good one at that. Sure, much like Resident Evil 7, the dialogue misses the mark 9 out of 10 times, but unlike RE7, this game completely embraces the hamminess and absurdity in every story beat. It's just easier to swallow when it's not all so serious. I kept wondering if they were gonna explain how the fuck Zoe just stapled Ethan's hand back on because of the logical, serious tone they set. But nah, I guess you can just staple a hand back on and it fucking works again. That's one example of that weird seriousness versus craziness contrast that Resident Evil 7 is constantly wrestling with. Chris's campaign in RE6 is the most serious of the bunch, but in my opinion it still balances on that razor's edge of heavy intensity and absurd nonsense that Resident Evil is known for better than the seventh game. I mentioned the callbacks that Biohazard makes to the old RE games earlier, and none of those callbacks are more significant than the final moments of the game. It's the moment you know is coming. Oh man, oh man, is that him? Is that my main man right there? Pop that helmet off, Chrissy boy, oh. No. Chris went from a bona fide T-bone steak of a man to a little beanhead having motherfucker. He just looks wrong. I reject hashtag Chris Beanfield. Give me back the boulder biceps. Give me the meaty, hammy hero that I know and love. Speaking of Beanfield's beanie head, why does every human being look like shit in this game? Ugh, put that shit away. How the fuck does a five-year-old game have better facial animation than a 2017 AAA release? By this point, much like the other segments, this has completely derailed into inane ranting. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to wrap up my thoughts on these two stories.
Resident Evil 7, to me, was incredibly predictable because I felt like I'd seen it all before. Despite the oppressive intensity that the story was going for, none of the characters ever stuck out enough for me to give a shit. My investment in this story peaked like an hour in when Jack Kool-Aid Man threw that wall. The opening few hours of RE7 are genuinely compelling, but everything after that becomes too tropey and generic and joyless for me to love it as much as our other contender. Resident Evil 6. RE6's story isn't a masterpiece, guys. But what, like Resident Evil was fucking Shakespeare before 6? Remember guys, this is the same series that became a joke because its voice acting was just that bad. This house is dangerous. There are terrible demons. Ouch! The main reason people love this series isn't because of the intense dialogue or deep story beats. People love it because of the characters and that classic Japanese as fuck Resident Evil personality. And to me, 6 has this in spades, way more than 7. In conclusion. So there you have it. RE7 ends with two points and RE6 rounds it out with three. Making this video and playing through almost the entirety of what RE6 has to offer has made me come to the realization that I fucking love this game. And please, don't misconstrue this video as me just shitting completely on RE7. Neither game is perfect and I really did enjoy them both. But hey, if you haven't given RE6 a shot, which is completely possible, seeing as everybody seems to hate this adorable little game, I highly recommend throwing down the 10 to 15 bucks that I assume it's worth at this point. This game is too magnificent to pass up.